Hello and welcome back to Land Development 101, the next video in our series. Uh, we've already discussed uh, the introduction to land development as a whole, as well as introduction to rough grading. So the next segment that we're going to be talking about in this video is the introduction to wet utilities. So what are the wet utilities exactly? Well, the wet utilities is the installation of the sewer pipe, the storm drain, and the water. Number one, the first one I want to talk about is the sanitary sewer. Uh, if you haven't guessed it, the sewer line carries all the waste from your house and it carries it to treatment facilities or other disposals located off-site. It's typically the deepest utility, just in case if there's ever a leak, nothing will ever seep out of the pipe and drain into the water or the storm drain below. The most common type of material I've seen for this is uh, PVC, and it's uh, green just like you can see here in these pictures, just to differentiate from the water lines. Uh, I've also seen VCP, which is vitrified clay pipe, been used for sewer, but for the most part, it's more common to see PVC. Number two is storm drain. Uh, the storm drain collects all excess rainwater from the site and it, it discharges it either into other bodies of water, such as rivers, lakes, canals, reservoirs, oceans, uh, or it discharges into basins, which is typically more of what uh, is common around here in this area in Southern California. Uh, there's different types of basins, but of course we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail in a later video. Uh, the most common type of material for storm drain is RCP, or reinforced concrete pipe. And of course there's other materials, HDPE and, and whatnot, but again, mostly what I see is RCP. Now the water will typically enter the storm drain system through catch basins located on sides of the streets. Just like the picture there on the right, you can see that's a catch basin there. Um, and when the water exits, it's typically discharged through outlet structures. Um, now there's all sorts of different types of, of outlet structures or designs and forms as far as uh, discharging that water. So this is just one of the designs for one of our projects. And I want to kind of show you what this, this, this would look like on an actual plan set. So here is a snippet from one of our plans and you can see that number five, which is a, it's a 42 inch RCP. And you can see the storm drain running right through the center of the street. And if you can imagine, this is where the track kind of, it slopes down considerably. And the storm drain punches through that, through that wall. And then here is the outlet structure there, which is number 17. So if you find that here in the construction notes, it says, construct winged wall, inlet outlet per detail on sheet two. So if you were, go to, if you were to go to that sheet, this is what it would show you. And uh, I don't want to overwhelm you um, and go into too much detail, but I at least just wanted to show you what this looks like. And this is basically telling the subcontractor how to construct that wing wall for the outlet structure. Pretty cool. All right, number three is the water. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. The water line provides water to all the houses in your, in your community. Just like the sewer, the most common type of material used is typically PVC. Uh, again, the other materials could be um, VCP, which is the clay pipe, or ductile iron. But again, um, most common material is the PVC. And uh, you can see here that the color is blue, uh, unlike the sewer, which was green. Next thing I want to talk about are the sewer laterals and the water services. Now, the pictures you saw on the previous slides for the water and sewer were the pictures of the, the main line. Um, now the sewer lat laterals and the water services are these sections right here that break off from the main and uh, feed the house there. And what, would hap what happens is the wet utility sub will install the water service in the sewer lateral up to a certain point past the curb. And, uh, and later on the plumber will then pick up where the wet utility sub left off and, ex and finish and extend those lines all the way up to the house. So here's a picture of what that looks like. Uh, typically the wet utility sub will leave those services above ground just so they don't get buried and lost as the course of construction continues. Uh, this is also known as being left wild. Um, so here the picture on the left you can see that this is uh, the water main coming through just like that. And then this smaller pipe branching off is the water service. And you can see as it goes under and then pops up here and it's going to be left above ground. Um, and then same thing with this picture on the left. You have the curb, and, uh, the curb that's already in. Uh, the street is going to be right here on the right. And the water is poking through or the copper service is poking through and snaking up just like that. And here's another picture of what those services look like after everything's backfilled and uh, the streets are in. You can see these lines here. That's, those are the water services. And then these white uh, pipes here. That's for the sewer. So those services are left wild. 
All right, let's jump over to an actual plant set. I actually, I, I want to show you guys what an actual water and sewer plant set actually looks like. So here's a sheet from one of the plants for one of our projects. Uh, there's kind of a lot going on, but if you can kind of just make out the main details, you got the street coming in and uh, you got the lots here on each side. But let's focus in here a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at this thicker bold line and it's uh, construction note 31. So if we go over here to the legend here on the side, number 31 under sewer, construct eight inch C900 PVC sewer. So that is our main sewer line coming through the street there. Um, number 36, let's see what this says here at the end. Remove existing eight inch cap and join the existing eight inch sewer. So what that's saying is the, uh, the sewer already exists out in the main street. And so that is going to be our POC or point of connection for the sewer right there. And we'll take that in. Now, if you also take a look, you can see that there's other thick, bold lines that break off from the sewer main. And you probably know what that is already. But let's take a look. Number 34 says that is our four inch sewer lateral. So you can see that every lot obviously gets a sewer lateral and is breaking off from the main there in the middle of the street. Now let's see if we can find the water line. Um, I'm going to take a guess that it's this one right here above it. Another line running through the street. Let's check out the construction note one. Here we go. Domestic water number one. Construct 8 inch PVC C900. Yep, so that is our that is our water line. And you can see similarly that's running through the street. And you got these other thinner lines that are breaking off from the main and feeding each lot. And let's let's uh, take a look at what that is. So that's not it. It's this one. Right, yeah, this one right here. Number 10. Number 10 says one inch water service. So yep. Yeah, so those lines are water services. You can see one here, one here, and of course they're feeding uh, each lot. Now another cool thing, if you come up here, typically on these plans, so this is this is as if you're you're looking down on the project. This right here is an elevation view, so it's it's as if you're in the ground and you're looking straight. Uh, you're standing up and you're looking straight at the pipe um, in the ground. Um, this is a great reference because it shows you the depth and where where it actually where the pipes sit w with relation to the ground, um, to the finished surface, as well as um, uh, other pipes and other utilities running through the ground. Um, in this case, the sewer and the water don't necessarily. I mean, they run side by side, and of course, there's uh, there are instances where they kind of overlap each other. So you can see the water here comes across the sewer which is running here. So in that case, that's a, it's then important to be able to come up here and take a look and see where the water and sewer are in relation to each other. Because obviously when they're crossing, you don't want them running into each other, but you also need the minimum distance between them. So 30 inch storm drain. So this is a storm drain and it's telling you uh, that's above the sanitary sewer. And again, so here's the sewer. Again, like we mentioned, it's typically the deepest utility. Uh, storm drain and then you got the water right here above that so this is good again to show you uh, in relation that uh, where everything should be in relation to each other here's just another sheet that shows the same thing you got the sewer running through you got the water right there and then uh, remember how we talked about earlier the storm drain well here are the catch basins on each side and you can see the the storm drain laterals coming from this uh, catch basins feeding into a storm drain right there. All right, and that wraps up our introduction video to wet utilities. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you found it beneficial or if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave it below. I'd love to hear from you. You can also visit us online at landdevelopment101.com. But if you have any suggestions or recommendations, please reach out. Again, we'd love to hear from you.